buprenorphine is, you know, and I had to be careful because, um, also, you know, being an addict, uh, it, my dosage was uh, four a day, and at first I wanted to take more because I, I, you know, being an addict, what four is good, eight will be better. Um, after running out a few times early and after playing that little game with that, you know, it was like no more because Dr. Richardson, you know, I'm going to fire you as a patient. You can't do this. Buprenorphine is a, a prescription medication that's used to treat opioid addiction and opioid dependence. Um, recognizing the need to help people get off uh, drugs to which they're addicted. Um, the, the medication buprenorphine was approved to be prescribed in the, in the uh, doctor's office, it's sort of similar to the model of methadone, but without a lot of the disadvantages of methadone. And, and, and it, it was the behavior. It doesn't change. It, once that buprenorphine locks into the receptors, you know, you, it doesn't make you high. You just feel you don't have any cravings. And it was just the behavior. Well, the only option for people uh, who wanted to do some sort of opioid maintenance up until now has been methadone, um, which requires going into a methadone center every day. Um, it's kind of a demoralizing experience for a lot of people. It's sort of a culture of dependence. Um, it, um, it, it's, it interferes with uh, having a normal work life. Uh, and a lot of people are just not comfortable doing that. So it's a really good alternative to that. Um, my daughter uh, um, passed away uh, November of 2004 from a methadone, accidental methadone overdose. And that's when um, I, I could, it just repulsed me. I couldn't stand it anymore. I couldn't stand to take it. I couldn't, and the clinic wanted me to wait a year to get off of it. And I just, I wanted off of it then. So, when somebody, a person who has uh, opioid addiction, whether it be to heroin or to prescription opioids like OxyContin or Percocet, first time that a person like that experiences an opioid, they, they often recall that they feel normal for the first time. And often these are people who have experienced some pretty significant emotional trauma earlier in their life. And for the first time, they feel like they, or feel, they feel free of that or they feel, they feel right in some way. And once they've experienced that, there's a, there's a, a, a desire to repeat that, that experience. So there's a, a, a craving to satisfy that, that need. That's saved my life, literally. The Suboxone has saved my life. It started me on the um, Suboxone, and it, it just, um, you know, it, it, uh, it was a gradual, um, a gradual experience of, it didn't just stop everything at once, it stopped the physical symptoms at once, but it stopped the mental craving and it just, you know, slowly dissipated and allow, I was going to groups. I was actually, um, some people complain of, of not being able to sleep or it didn't affect me that way at all. I just, um, I could sleep, I could eat, I could, um, uh, but the biggest thing is I didn't crave drugs, you know. And those, the, there are opioid receptors in the brain that sort of seem to, to want to be satisfied. And if it's not with heroin or prescription opioid, it can be done with uh, buprenorphine. Uh, so it's, a it, patient can engage with a, a practitioner and receive it through prescription. And it's, uh, it's a maintenance medication uh, like any other medication and it can uh, eliminate the need to engage in illegal activity, to um, do uh, injecting and other um, you know, t types of use of um, drugs that is endangering to their health. And uh, basically it can restore normal functioning. And it was the first time in my life I didn't, I didn't crave drugs. Um, I just felt okay, whatever okay means. And, um, you know, I felt evened out, um, stabilized. I wasn't up high, I wasn't low, I was just okay. 
um, and, and that was such a relief and to me. Um, buprenorphine is an opioid. Um, it um, satisfies the opioid receptors by binding to them. It takes the place of, of heroin or a prescription opioid. Um, it has a higher affinity for the opioid receptors than those other opioids. So when it's first given, if the patient has been taking heroin or another opioid, it will knock that drug off of the receptors. I really first, first being on it, and then I had to wait for all the, the residue to leave my body, and then getting back on it. So, but as soon as I was put on it, um, within a week's, within, no, within 72 hours, the physical symptoms were, of withdrawal were gone. Really looking at providing substance abuse services such as the Suboxone and being able to do inductions and uh, ongoing maintenance for people who are addicted and expand the access for treatment for people because there really wasn't a lot of access or there isn't a lot of access I should say. And what that really does is allow people to get the services with their primary care doctor who they know. Um, and what we're also finding is that people coming from the community to get Suboxone treatment, inductions and maintenance actually are not connected with primary care providers. So this has been a really good opportunity to engage them into primary care and that many of them actually stay um, with the providers for ongoing care. So the timing is critical. So if the person has been using heroin, they have to be in a state of withdrawal before they take the first dose, or else the buprenorphine will knock the heroin off the receptors and induce withdrawal. So the timing of the first dose is critical. So we work with the patient prior to doing the induction so that they come in in a state of moderate withdrawal. We give them the first dose under supervision. We monitor their response to it and give them a second and a third dose over a period of a few hours. And once they're feeling more comfortable, their withdrawal symptoms have resolved, we send them home, we keep in close contact with them in the next couple of days and, and it's, uh, it's, it's very, very successful. People uh, have complete resolution of cravings for, for whatever opioid they were dependent on before and complete um, resolution of any withdrawal symptoms and they can begin to go back to a normal life twice now have had to stop inductions because there was just more of a need than we could actually supply. Um, and there are limits to the numbers of patients anyhow, but we really, just because we really needed to figure out our internal systems. And then also the other issue here is payment. Um, these are incredibly time, you know, it takes a lot of time, it's a lot of effort, and our providers are doing it, they're very committed to doing it. Um, especially Dr. Lurio that you met yesterday. And, um, but we haven't really figured out how to get adequately paid for the amount of time that someone is actually being monitored. Um, the providers do it a little bit differently. What seems to be coming out is like a best practice, if that's what you're, is that um, the provider will work out of, if they usually work out of two exam rooms for that period of time, they might work out of one, or we do it at a time where that can, provider can actually work out of three exam rooms, so they go through their normal workflow with two exam rooms, and then they have the patient where they're doing the induction in the third, and then nursing and them can sort of pop in and out in between patients and check on them, you know, and monitor them, and then they keep them in there. What I think we need to do organizationally is, you know, it's hard to sit in an exam room for a couple of hours. I mean, you can tell people bring a book, bring a friend, you know, but I think at some point as we go forward, we have to think, you know, maybe as we design new spaces, um, to have a place where someone could sit comfortably, where there might be a TV, where they would, you know, be able to, to do the, you know, to go through the induction in private. Um, so I think that's something, you know, that organizations would want to think about if they're going to do this and, and they have the luxury of, of trying to design a space for it.